Okay, so this week we are doing front and rear suspension. What I'm gonna go through today is a really quick overview of uh, how to check your suspension for damage, just make sure you're maintaining it. Then uh, set your preload for your weight. And then the third thing will be talking about tension, compression, and those sorts of things, uh, which basically control how fast your suspension moves and how it responds to, you know, flat roads like tarmac, and then how it responds to bumpy roads and what your suspension's gonna do and how to set it properly. So without any more stuffing around, let's get to it. So we're gonna do this walk around style. I'm gonna show you how I check my suspension and just kind of from a point of view perspective so that you can actually see where, what I'm looking for, and you know, what it looks like when you see damage. So right here, you can see heaps of damage. That was because from the showroom, the actual preload here, that collar, wasn't wound down properly. So it was actually all the way at the top. The spring was had no tension on it and it was flopping around in there, causing damage. And you can see there, the actual shaft has been damaged there. So that kind of sucks, but hey, that's life. Um, now I spoke to uh, Triumph. They actually call it a wear item. So they actually won't replace that under warranty. Massive, massive frown. Anyway, so you wanna check these bolts, make sure they're tight. There's a couple of people who have noticed like a huge gap in here. Uh, and so they've, you know, had to double check that, make sure that's tight. Um, same, same with down here, this bolt here that bolts it to your swing arm. And as for your front suspension, you should notice if you have any of these bolts loose. That, they are your triple clamps, your steering will be absolutely terrible if any of those has issues. Um, so fingers crossed you don't actually have any issues with that. Okay, so setting your preload on your rear shocks is usually a winding of the spring. It's just basically like this. And you're trying to make sure that you are using 30%, one third roughly of the entire spring travel when you just sit on the bike. So what you need to be able to do to calculate that and set it properly is measure between here and here and then sit on the bike and then measure between here and here. And so you've, that gives you those two measurements. Now, you minus the bigger number off the smaller number, okay? So let's say it's 300 and 200, and then that gives you 300 minus 200 equals 100. That is how far into the travel you are sitting. So 83 mils is how far I want this to move when I sit down on the bike. So to be able to do that, what you need to do is, it's, it might sound a bit strange because you're actually winding this spring tighter and it's pushing down, but what it's actually doing is this part of the bike is actually moving upwards, so you will increase slightly on the height of the bike, but um, what it's also doing here is squeezing that spring tighter so that the spring is under tension already and when you hit a bump, it's not gonna have all that extra momentum of the softer part of the spring. So it actually, as you squeeze the spring tighter and tighter, it takes more and more force to force the spring almost you know, squished flat, right? So what you wanna do is try to get that, nut, that 83 number. So you wind the spring, check it, wind it, check it. Now you need to make sure that both springs, either side, are the same distance from the top because they need to be level because they're working together they need to be working at the same rates um, so once you've got that done that is the basis you should not have to change that unless you stack on a bunch of kilos 
So the next one that we're gonna get into is a little more uh, to do with feel and what sort of surface that you're riding on. So we're gonna talk specifically to off-road surfaces and pretty gnarly off-road surfaces. So uh, let's get into that. So on the top of your scrambler, you'll notice these little duvers here. These little things here. One end has an S, one side has an S, one side has a H. So H is harder all the way, is the hardest, okay? So that's probably what you'd go on road. And then all the way S is soft. So it's gonna be nice and soft. What you're setting there is your spring compression, they call it, or bound. So compression, also known as bound, is basically when your wheel takes a big bump, it compresses the spring. So if you're off-road, what you wanna do is absorb those bumps. So generally, I just, you know, as I'm putting up to a dirt road, I stop, I put my, I turn all my traction control off on the bike, and then I just basically wind that as soft as I can go, all the way. So I just get in and go, yep, okay, she's soft, sweet, let's go. So, rebound. This controls how fast that spring comes back out. So you'll hit a bump, spring goes up, and then the spring will push that back down at a certain speed according to how you've set this. Now, once again, it's got a hard and a soft setting or a fast and a slow setting. So it's basically, do you want it to come out fast or do you want it to come out slow? This is kind of the finicky bit. If you want to get traction to the ground, you need your wheel to be on the ground. So you need to find that sweet spot with this in terms of making sure it's fast, fast or slow enough to the conditions. If it's really bumpy, what you generally want is a slow rebound rate because what you'll be doing is kind of floating over the tops of those bumps. Normally, you know, if you're cruising over those bumps, your wheel will kind of skip over the top of them and you'll, you'll be you know, revving off that and trying to get traction as your wheel hits the ground. But if you're basically just on kind of like flat dirt roads, you could probably keep that you know, pretty fast and then all hard, whatever sort of way you want to set it. Fast is hard, soft is slow, if that makes sense. And slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Um, so yeah, it's really a finicky setting, but it's kind of <laughs> depends to your personal preference. The only other thing we need to cover off uh, today is the front, which is basically the same. So we'll get into that now. So we are talking about preload for the front. If you wanna get a preload set for your weight, you can actually order new springs that'll fit inside your fork tubes and be adjusted for your weight. Um, I'm not sure exactly what that'd cost. I'm pretty sure a, a guy told me it'd be about 200 bucks. So that's, that's, you know, just something to think about. So I did feel a little bit silly when I was like, hey, this one says compression, but that one does tension. So how am I gonna adjust them? And then someone's like, well, they're clamped here, they're clamped there. They actually move together. So your bound or your compression, so the spring softness up when you hit a bump will be this one. So if you want to soften that, turn it soft on here. And then if you want to slow down the rate at which your wheel comes back out, it's this one. Um, so just keep that in mind. It's something that unless you know, you don't know. So these are the sorts of things I really wanted to share. Okay, so we're out in the Glasshouse Mountains today and what I'm doing is actually taking my bike through different sort of off-road pieces to adjust and tweak my suspension settings. And then what I do is store them in here or I can put them on my phone and I know how many clicks on each of the settings just to do when I go to a certain area. Um, now, 
You don't have to be as finicky as that. You don't have to change it every single time, but at least having a rough idea because you really don't want to run your bike just super hard like you were on the road when you're off-road because you'll have bottoming out issues or you'll potentially have it too stiff and it'll kick you off the bike. Uh, so I'd really recommend making sure that you have your sus suspension settings uh, sort it before coming out into a quite, you know, uh, gnarly off-road stuff. Okay, so that wraps us up for this week's suspension lesson. I hope you learned a thing or two, and if you like the video and want to learn more about your scrambler before you go off-road, or even just, you know, uh, brush up on your skills and techniques and knowledge, just uh, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. And then you'll get notified when my next video comes out, which is on not telling. You've got to come next week. So have a good one. Keep scrambling.